We're going to do a few things today to close off all of the new concepts in parametrics, um, which I'm pretty happy about, by the way. Um, I mean, we're ahead of time. We should be ahead of time. But we're really ahead of time. So you guys have done very well. Um, we, all we're lacking, really, and you'll do this in period two a little bit and on Friday, too, is um, just some time to take these ideas. We're going to put them all on one page um, so you can see them all at once and just, just use them in a variety of different contexts and sometimes in combination with each other. Okay, So that's all we're missing from this topic, and then it's done. Our next topic is an HSC topic. And it's going to be called series and sequences. Okay, uh, I've alluded to it before. We're going to deal with it in depth next term. Okay, um, but apart from that, we also need to settle um, stuff about the time slots for the extension two classes next term. So can you please remind me after this happens um, to have that conversation with you? Because I can almost guarantee I'll forget because I'll be so caught up in the awesomeness of parameters. So I need a new color. Let's have a go. Uh, by the way, I just recommend, and most of you guys are pretty good at this already because <laughs> that's how you got to this place in year 11. Uh, I always recommend, you, whenever you get through a topic, right, you do this kind of thing. Um, you produce for yourself, all right, this is kind of like, for lack of a better way to say it, this is my cheat sheet, this is my review, this is my summary of all the big concepts and ideas that I can look at one glance and see, you know, two, three weeks worth sort of condensed here, right? And it also gives you a reference point for when you come back to this a few weeks, months later, and you look and you're like, mm, recognize this, recognize this, recognize this. This, you should let that happen because you're learning so very much all at once, right? So that gives you a point to say, oh, this is what I need to revise, okay? And having it all in one point makes that process much easier, right? So let's think about this parabola x squared equals 4ay. Let's think about all the things that we, all the results that we have shown so far. Well, we think parametrically first, because that's kind of a big point of this topic. Every point on the parabola can be thought of in terms of the parabola, just like every point on a unit circle can be thought of in terms of theta. It's cos theta sine theta, right? Every point of the parabola, its coordinates can be given by. 2ap ap squared, or 2at at squared, or whatever name you want to give that parameter. For this, let's just go with p. That'll do, okay? Uh, if you have a second point, that will most likely be called q, and its coordinates will be 2aq aq squared. So when you've got a tangent, I wonder if you um, have learnt this one yet, y equals, this is one of the simplest results, okay? Because the tangent, it's going to have that same gradient, right? So you go p x, and then you take away, yeah, a p squared, right? So there are a lot of similarities for this, from what you already know, just by defining a point, okay? The normal was not nearly as elegant, and as, as a result, um, its form wasn't particularly pretty. But you're going to get this: two a p a p cubed. There you go. You've seen this before. The normals, and we're going to get to the Cartesian one as well, which we didn't get to look at yesterday. The normals don't come up as frequently as the tangents because you could do more interesting things with the tangents. But it's still worth looking at that and having a bit of a memory of it. All right, let's go to the chord. Now, you remember the chord, right, is what happens to the tangent when it doesn't intersect at one spot, when it intersects at a pair, right? So that's why this equation and this equation are so very similar to each other. I'll give you a clue. It starts with a half. P plus Q, very good. It's the average, the gradient of is the average of the gradients at the two tangents on your endpoints, right? So that's that. Minus APQ. Okay? And that can be spoken of as the limit of this as Q approaches P, right? When this becomes P, you get half times 2P, which is P. And voila. Okay, so one of two things will happen uh, with all of these. Either number one, exactly what you said, you have to prove all of these, and they don't, they don't take too long. They'll often guide you through that process, like part one will be prove where the tangent is, etc. right? Uh, uh, it's not like, and I was mentioning this before, it's not like a result like this. Way prove it. But now that you've proven it, you never need to prove it again. But parametrics is not the same. Okay? 
That's option one, you've got to prove it. Option two is they will actually, in the question, they will say, the equation of a normal is x plus py equals da da da. And in big, bold, italic letters, they'll say, do not prove this. Do not prove it. And then they'll be expecting you, like what they're assessing therefore is can you use it in the context of this question? And we don't want students to get caught up in, oops, I proved it wrong, and then I can't do the rest of the question, and I've lost four marks automatically. Um, so you'll see one of those, and it'll make it pretty clear. Okay. All right, let's keep going. There's a couple of things I wanted to note about the chord, right? If it's a focal chord, right, if the chord passes through the focus, what do we know about P and Q? They have a special relationship. Yeah, that's right. Uh, those, those tangents are going to be perpendicular, which means that their gradients, P and Q, they multiply to negative 1, right? If it's a focal chord, that is true. Okay. Uh, another thing about chords is that there's a particular focal chord that goes straight across the parabola, at least if you've got a normal, you know, up-oriented one, right? So you've got a particular focal chord, here's a, a more specific way to say it, that is parallel to the directrix, right? So I've got the directrix hanging out down here, and the lattice rectum is going to be parallel to that, right? What's special about the lattice rectum? What makes it the focal chord, uh, this special focal chord? Yeah. The length of it, the length of it, um, we might, I might add that in. The length is 4a, okay? Uh, it's gradient, the gradient of the lattice rectum, in, in this case would be zero, okay? But if my, if my um, parabola went this way, right, it wouldn't have a gradient because the lattice rectum would be vertical, okay? So it's parallel to the directrix. Okay. Now, I just want to point out one more quick thing. Don't, don't mix it in with what you're about to write here because um, we'll make this nice and neat. But just on the side, I want you to note something. Here's a simple parabola. Okay? If I draw the um, directrix down here, I draw this really light because I'm going to have to get rid of it shortly. There's the directrix. Here is where the lattice rectum could be, straight across. Okay? Now, because parabolas are symmetrical shapes, right? do you notice when we think about the gradients at these endpoints, right, here and here, okay? What could you do about the gradient of the tangent and the gradient of the tangent here? What kind of relationship do they have? Yeah. Like they are reflections of each other, right? In fact, because you're if this um, has a gradient of p, right, uh, actually that's a bad example, I'll make this one p because it's increasing, okay? It's going up at that rate. Because of the exact reflection, the gradient minus, right, but ho hold on a second. We just said the lattice rectum is a special, it's a special focal cord. It has to pass through the focus, right? So if this is P and this is Q, like Q is negative P, right? Then this should still be true, right? PQ should still be negative 1, and this should be true. Ah, but, but if P times Q, which you just told me is negative P, if they're equal to negative 1. Are you following with me? Okay. Uh, I've got minus p squared equals minus 1. So p squared equals 1. Did I, did I do everything right? Does that look okay? Now, in this particular example, I've just kind of defined for p to be positive, right? Uh, p could be either one. You're just going to flip it around, like you have p here and q there, or vice versa, okay? But what this means is that the lattice rectum, these, these points across here, they're always, not only does it have this property, but it's parallel, right? But the gradients will always exactly be 1. That's interesting. Did you ever notice that? Probably not because we don't tend to draw our parabolas to scale, right? So it'll look fatter or thinner than what it ra actually is. Um, but go ahead. I, uh, I know some of you are going to do this anyway. Go into Desmos, right? Pull up. Do any parabola you like, right? This is just for any parabola. You can make the focal length you know, really, really small or really, really tall. When you plot in the lattice rectum, right, and it's not, it, what's the equation of this, by the way? For x squared equals 4ay, what's the equation of this? Remember, the, um, the equation of this guy, the directrix, is y equals minus a. This is going to be y equals a, right? This is very easy to put onto, um, onto Desmos, right? Put that across and then plot the tangents, right? You will find them intersecting at exactly 45 degrees because of this point, okay? Because it's value, rather. All right, now that was just interesting. That's pretty much all that we know in terms of 
results for the parametric representation of a parabola. Okay?